Howdy, everybody. It's Andy from Inside the Music, and today I have with me Chris Salem from Mixed Down Online. He also has an academy. Uh, if you haven't uh, had an opportunity yet to check it out, I highly suggest you look it up on the internet. Chris, can you give them uh, where they can find that information? Yeah, straight on my uh, on my website, mixdown.online. That simple, you know, so all courses and the uh, uh, the page to get into the membership, which is closed right now. OK, not the membership itself, but the registrations. OK, so it, I open that a couple of times a year. So just important to be on the mailing list or the waiting list for the mixed down coaching community, you know, so and Andy is actually one of the top <laughs> contributors, you know, and uh, members Thank pretty you. active. Pretty yeah, active. I, yeah, I, I try to be. Um, I, I try my best to, to to be in there to help other people out. It, 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 you know, as much of my knowledge is, uh, it can go it can go to. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's a wonderful uh, wonderful community to get involved with. Uh, everybody's there to help one another out. Yeah, lots of nice people there. It's so it's so cool to uh, to interact with all of them. You know, especially on the live streams. Yes. And people, you know, it's kind of a big family you now. People are helping each other out. And the cool thing is when listening to all those mixes, you know, because we do lots of mixing feedbacks um, on live sessions and seeing the improvement, you know, and seeing the, the um, yeah, the, the journey everyone goes through, you know, by improving themselves with their mixes and their music. It's great. It's always encouraging. It's, uh, it's a payoff. Yeah, and I enjoy the uh, the other side of things too, where you uh, give lessons um, or, or challenges, I should say. Uh, yeah, the challenges are nice. Yeah, those are fun too because everybody you get to hear everyone's different ideas and how they hear things. So that's it's you know it's pretty cool to see that. Yeah, but yeah, that's the cool thing about challenges. Challenges when we mix like the same song or we have like the same task and challenge to do. And like you said, you know, everyone listens. As like a different way to listen to music, you know. Yeah, it's, and to it's make an art. Judgment calls when when mixing, so it's a, right, right. It's right. I mean, not every painter paints the same new uh, boss scene, so you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the same thing with music. So, well, let's jump. On <laughs> oh, yeah, to, sure. Let's jump on to the question. So I call this uh, I call this five on five and five is what I call this. So you're going to have five questions where you can answer. It takes as much time as you like, and then the next five are going to be kind of rapid questions where. Well, okay. You, you can you can take as much time as you like, but you know the shorter answer the better. <laughs> Perfect. I like that. Let's no. do it. All right. So awesome. here we go. And I got my my list that I made the other day. And I, by the way, I didn't read the question, so I don't have a clue on what you're going to ask me. And nope. That's that's part of the fun of this whole thing is 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 to you know um, get you to think a little bit. So mm -hmm. so here we go. And and you're thinking live. <laughs> I am thinking live. <laughs> so, all right. So I, I know uh, you wear many hats when it comes to all that you do, Chris. Um, could you please tell us what you consider yourself to be first, secondly, and thirdly? In other words, you know, producer, uh, mixing engineer, that type of thing. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> okay. I would say like, if I look at, my whole 20 year career doing this most of the time i uh, i'm in the studio it's producing music so that was my main gig it was a music producer you know and to an extent it still is because i still produce my own music and uh, i just stopped doing it for clients so i the client side now is mainly mixing mastering um but yeah and i think i'll i'll go back to producing also but you know uh so i would say music producer you know the inside of my soul is a music producer and i've been you know getting my income doing that you know for more than 17 18 years wow that's that's awesome so i guess that's fair to call me a music producer yeah i'd say even i even do more mixing now than i used to <laughs> uh, that i you know compared to production right. in general right but you know to yeah, to be successful that long at something, uh, uh, many businesses, uh, you know, and because it is a business, they don't make it, it past is. the first three years. So, you know, to, to, yep. you just, to get to 17 <laughs> or 20, you know, that's, that's. Yeah. I started back in 2003, my <laughs> first paid gig. Oh, wow. Yeah. Summer of uh, 20, uh, 2003. 
So that's like, yeah, 20, it's going to be 21 years ago. Imagine. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that's man. a long time. Yeah. And my first thing was as a music producer. So it was a, a live album. Imagine. Wow. Not an easy task to start no, it up. Uh, no, no. So yeah, just, you know, yeah, give me the hardest, hardest one to do first and then I'll knock it out of the ballpark. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. So, okay. And, and, and then as far as your, your, your stuff on YouTube, do you consider that part of, you know, a, a, a second or third type of thing, or is that a, is that just kind yeah, of, yeah, now the, the, yeah, the last few years, I would say, uh, an educator on YouTube, you know, educating people on music production, mixing, mastering for the home studio musician. You know, I think that would be my title, I would say. Yeah. You know, uh, this is what I do the most, you know. Right, right, right. So well, right I, now, yeah, that's, that's, for the time being, we'll see. We'll see later what's going to happen. But now this is what I do. Well, I, I discovered you about maybe, uh, I'm guessing probably five years ago maybe i'm like that yeah you've been like you've that. been around for a long time man yeah yeah <laughs> so you know and and so you you've helped me out tremendously you know getting that's cool the, yeah getting in the cue base was uh a challenge for me <laughs> so thank you it's a challenge for a lot you know learning a dog is not easy no no and then so you know eventually i'm gonna i'm gonna try something else eventually but not right now i'm, I'm still you know getting my chops uh in cue base so <laughs> anyways cool. thank you for that first answer uh okay let's go on to question number two uh in case uh anyone out there is watching is not aware chris is a a, a phenomenal drummer um oh thank so you question for you okay, I'm, I'm gonna say i'm a drummer okay <laughs> 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 well i've heard your stuff so i i, I can send you phenomenal so that's, that's <laughs> how i look at it <laughs> so this question has to do with your drumming talents when did you start drumming and hmm. uh, what inspired you to pick up that instrument? Um, at the beginning, I, w I wanted to play an instrument. I remember, you know, starting a band with a friend, but at hmm. that time it was like, I, I actually saw myself as a bass player to begin hmm. with, but my best friend took up the bass first. So, you know, I ended up on drums. So that was the next best thing, you know. So <laughs> and I was 12 years old or something like that, 12 or 13, you know. I started a bit late, uh, so not very young, um, but I cut it off pretty fast. So self-taught, and self I think I just took a few lessons now, do from you have any, and that's it. Any artist or anybody that you uh, kind of look up to? Um, you know, or you just kind of, uh, I would say maybe in those days, back in those days, when I started to, uh, well, as a teenager, you know, I used to be a huge rush fan, huge yes fan, especially. Oh, and of course I went into dream theater and all that stuff, you know, Mike Portnoy and name it. I was actually the driver of Mike Portnoy for one of the Montreal gigs years ago. Oh, wow. It was, it was funny. Yeah. Back, I think it was in 2004 four or 2006 yeah six or eight oh wait i think yeah so a friend of mine called me uh, uh at that time and told me you know we're doing a drum clinic and uh i'm friends with the rep at was it sabian i think it was sabian mm -hmm. and uh yeah we need someone to drive uh, mike portnoy from the event to the <laughs> Bell center for the show you know and i was already going i had tickets you know to go see the show Ooh, anyway oh, awesome. so, so yeah, i'll do it <laughs> so, <laughs> i went to pick him up you know so waiting for him singing you know he was singing right, uh, doing right. some grass and stuff you know so all right it's time to go mike let's go <laughs> <laughs> nice dude That's you know cool. so we chatted uh, on our way to the bell center which is like the big arena in montreal mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so and i was a big fan so yeah so that was my 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 background, uh, musically speaking, you know, so progressive music was my, my thing back then. <laughs> yeah. And, and of course all the Canadian bands back then, uh, progressive music from Canada was. Oh was man. Yeah. Big, big yeah. Deal. Yeah. Especially Quebec city, Quebec city is a, you know, a prog, uh, rock prog town big time, you know? Right. Yeah. And, oh. and my, my, my Canadian band back in the eighties was Saga. <laughs> saga yeah so, yeah i mean that, that was yeah. a, a band out in the, in the states they were you know somewhat big but but i liked them because they were just unique sounding mm -hmm. 
Um, didn't sound like Rush. Didn't sound like Triumph. You know, didn't uh, they? They did. They just had their own style, their own sound. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember Triumph. Now that you, uh, yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, <laughs> I used to like Triumph a lot, a lot. You know, April Wine. You know, all those bands. In the yeah, front yeah, set, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 aging ourselves here so <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> so yeah. you better we better stop now <laughs> there you go exactly let's move on to the next question <laughs> nice so the question has to do with uh what drew me to you which is the daw cubase that i use mm -hmm. um, so this is a this has two questions in one <laughs> which i can do because it's my show so <laughs> you're allowed man <laughs> I'm allowed to so I've, i'm 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 doing it this way so okay so what initially drew you to cubase as your preferred daw and the second part is uh in uh, if cubase vanished what would be your daw of choice okay okay that's a good question so the first one repeat the first one what led me what to, drew you, to what drew you to cubase you know what what was it did you try other and then you just kind of stuck with cubase yeah and, you know um back in the late 90s i was playing in the band a rock band and the, the lead singer was the producer you know so he had his own home studio and i was like i was not a producer whatsoever i wanted to be a producer but i knew nothing about computers technology and all that stuff the recording side like was, wasn't something i had lots of knowledge on um so he was a, he was in charge he, he has his, his own uh he had his own home studio and he was using cubase vst at the time on a g5 mac or something like the big blue towers back then um so that was my first introduction to cubase so for me like okay you record music you just use cubase so when i started uh, the uh recording production school back in 01 and 02 um i just uh started to work with cubase because cubase back then was like crackable like easily crackable you know and students let's face it everyone had like a, a waves plugin bundle cracked and a uh a cubase like sx2 at the time was the version that was available as a crack version now i'm not proud of that you know but that was my way in you know so i didn't have didn't have any money to to invest into a doll back then so we all had a copy of cubase and my friend knew cubase pretty well so that was kind of okay if i need some help i can ask colin you know and um yeah so this is why i started on on cubase but the minute i finished school and i had my first gig i just bought a license and that was it since then that was my first investment you know buying a rme sound interface and cubase sx2 and working with the stock plugins out of cubase and eventually invested in plugins so i just purchased everything from that point and never uh, stopped using cracked uh, product you know the minute i made money right. um and yeah so that was it so that was my cubase i just so, started working with it and that, that's it well, and kinda... without asking any question and uh, remember at that time pro tools was a big thing also mm -hmm. however they were stuck to the tdm thing for the full version so that was kind of a turnoff so for me to use pro pro tools at the time i needed to buy a uh um what was what was it called you know the an inter like a pro tools avid interface to work with a limited version of pro tools you know so but if you wanted to to uh, to go into the full version of pro tools you needed the tdm version which was like thousands of dollars right. uh, and cubase was like you know for a few hundred bucks you had the full version so that that was another reason i leaned towards cubase well well uh, so you and i kind of mirror each other a little bit there because uh when linda and i started started uh playing uh, uh well we wanted to start writing music and then also we wanted to uh, get a band going um my drummer i let him be the one to do the production side of things mm. and because he had uh well knowledge on it um way more than i did and i thought that would be the way to go and yeah then he, he was trying his best to get me involved with the that production side and also he was using cakewalk so he was really oh. trying to explain to me how to use you know how, how it all worked out and everything and and uh so i went and out and bought myself cubase four uh, okay so at 4le i think it was called okay yeah and man i opened it up and my eyes just went 
and <laughs> closed it and sat it over there in the corner for about a couple of years <laughs> until I found you. Man. And I'm like, Hey, okay. So then I, then I bought my first uh, real edition, uh, Cubase. I think it was nine. So, Oh man. Yeah. And that was a big jump from four to nine. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And, but the cool thing about it was because I had that four, they allowed me to do an upgrade, which wasn't the whole price of the cool. So, that, that's cool. man. I like so, that. Uh, enough of that. Now on to the second part of the question. So yes. if Cubase disappeared off the face of the earth, what would be your dog choice? You think? You know, th there's so many dogs out there and good dogs also. Um, now, I would say it's hard to tell. You know, I'm pretty attracted towards Reaper, maybe, if I was to, to switch DAW. Um, Studio One is also attractive. Now, Pro Tools, I did work with Pro Tools. You know, I mixed a few albums, maybe like four or five albums using Pro Tools, because when Pro Tools came out with Pro Tools 10, that was the first version that was fully native. Before yeah. that, prior to you need like you need like the HD version or TDM uh, back then, or an M box, you know, for a limited version. But when they came up with like a full version native, that was Pro Tools 10 or 9. Anyways, I bought Pro Tools 10. So you know, I'm gonna try it out, and I really enjoyed it to mix into, not to record and produce or edit. I just can't. But for mixing purposes, it was great. Um, so I uh, I wouldn't have any problems. To go back and mix on Pro Tools at all, well, there you go. Uh, but for more like for a complete DAW, I would say yeah, maybe something like you know I'm very curious about Reaper, and I know it can do like lots of stuff that other DAWs cannot do. You know, I have a good friend of mine that is like a, a Reaper genius. He does like everything. I think he's like this point to to be able to start his car with Reaper. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like crazy. It doesn't, I think Glenn Flicker uses uh, Reaper. He does. Right? He yeah, does. Yeah. So he's so, a big promoter um, of it. <laughs> yeah. Studio One is also another very good DAW, very similar to Cubase in a way, you know, as far as the looks goes and the way it works uh, from what I know. Um, but I don't know a lot about uh, Studio <laughs> One. Just you know, just going through through some what people uh, tell me about working in uh, in yeah. Studio. So <laughs> okay, well, yeah, and my my uh, my daughters are moving into high school this year, and one of them wants to get into music production, and they have a, cool. they have a course there at the at the high school, and of course they use Pro Tools. So that's going to be my venture into Pro Tools. Um, I'm really hoping he does it because I, I, you know, it's going to push me into another area. You know, yeah. The more, the I'm more actually you thinking have on, on maybe, so yeah. So. I'm actually thinking on maybe making some videos on my YouTube channel about venturing into another the, you know, right, right. You know, Cubase producer, you know, works with Reaper for the first time. I don't know, and try to okay. Let's open up this DAW and see how it goes. I think that'd be cool. I, I think you should do that. I really, I would like to see it. I, I would, I would definitely be interested. In I'm really considering it. <laughs> okay, well, keep <laughs> we'll me see. informed, please. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, on to the next question. Question four: What challenges do you face when working in your home studio, mm -hmm. and how do you overcome them? Uh, so, um, okay. My, like I moved like a year and a half ago, um, here in all in Calgary, Alberta. And now I'm kind of in a real home studio in the basement. The other studio I had back in Quebec was also a home studio, but more like kind of a project studio. The full basement was custom built, super like soundproofed. Um, different rooms, you know, like, like the real thing. Um, so now in this home studio, the challenge, since I didn't do any renos, is the soundproofing. You know, so yeah, when doing videos, I need to shut down the heating system, and you know, if people walk, I'm like yeah. under the kitchen, you know. So there's stuff like that. So I, I'm probably going to fix that up later on, you know. But for um for the first year or first couple of years be, at this house i told myself you know let's just tough it up and see what can be done and because it's still investing money you know and i want to sure. make sure it's worth it 
Sure. Um, and back then, you know, back when I first built my, my first studio, you know, my kids were younger, were running around and everything. So I needed to have to have like a fully soundproofed room. You know, now it's me and my wife. My daughter is 18. Like my youngest is 18. The other one is out of the house. Um, so it's not the same situation. But still, you know, when you're used to, to work in a soundproofed environment where everything is super quiet, Right. And now you kind of, okay, I can hear lots of stuff going on in the house. It's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so that would be it. That That's probably my number one thing is, is that yeah. we have three dogs. And every time the, <laughs> every time the mailman shows up at, at 930 on the money, the dogs have to go berserk for some reason, you know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so I, I hear you. Then, you know, my, my kid, yeah. they've gotten better at it now. So when Linda and I do recordings... Uh, it's not such a challenge anymore, but the, the AC unit or the heater. That That's the thing. That's the worst. Then you had that, which reminds me of tape. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> like a little exactly. tape that's in there, you know? But yeah, yeah that, that's probably the biggest challenge uh, for us to. Uh, yeah. I, I can add another one too. Now that I think of it, you know, the, uh, again, I had like several different rooms in the other studio. So the drums were in the, bigger room you know i had like a vocal booth in front of me you know and the control room was bigger sized than what i have now you know but it was only the control room now as, as you can see i have a drum kit mm -hmm. at the back of me you know so this is kind of my all-purpose room <laughs> you right, know right. another room on the side you know which is storage for now right. uh, which i might gonna use you know but my needs are not the same as they used to since i don't like get artists and people Right. work people here in the studio i mainly do mixing and mastering here you know and if i was to produce a band or an artist or having to work uh on recording a full band i would go somewhere else i would rent a space yeah and, and you know, so so, yeah. so but recording drums for my own music right here in a small room yeah i'm gonna call that a challenge <laughs> um so uh, let me touch touch base on something else that we have this on this topic you just did yeah. a video the other day uh, in regards to the IK Media Arc. Yes. Now is that something? Right here. Yeah. Uh, anyways, it's it's hooked up there. It's, it's hooked up there. So <laughs> comparing yeah. that to Sound ID, what would you? Is there any? You're gonna have to watch this week's video, man. It's coming okay. out tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm happy you asked. Yeah, <laughs> so, sweet. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually because I I know Sound ID pretty well. I've been working with it for years, and now I work with the Arc Studio, and that's the the setup that I have. Now we'll see. Maybe in the future I'll I'll work with another system. You know, so I give myself the freedom to to switch um, if I find something better. You know, but uh, the, the, what, what I'm going to tell you is there's pros and cons on both sides. And both systems are good. Okay. Okay. Well, you you, the, you are going to be price, well served either way. So yeah, yeah. The the price. It's a personal the, choice. The price point was what is what caught my my ear uh, uh, on the arc. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that's that's uh, it's not going to break the bank, and you know. Uh, no. Either way, it's not going to break the bank. You know, yeah. uh, whether you're going with Sound ID or uh, the ARC, it's like it's not going to break the bank. Right. Very true. Very true. So yeah, you but you see it on my YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to question number five, the first five of five and five. So, and finally, question number five, could you share a particularly rewarding experience or feedback you've received from your audience regarding your videos? Um, it's all, it, it's, it's always the same, you know, you help me a lot, you know, with my, my music. Um, I, I remember a few, like a few months ago, someone's sending me like a vinyl copy of their album. You oh, know, wow. that's because of you, you know, I, I went through your course and there you go. It's not perfect, but you know, I released it. It's there. Can I send it to you? Cool. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's sweet. <laughs> that's it is. Awesome. Yeah. That's it. That's inspiring for you. I say to keep it is going forward <laughs> big time, big time. So that's like, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I, 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 because transformation is what I'm, you know, this is what rewards me is when I see people being transformed. Right. They're production mixing skills or whatever they do in the studio right. by watching my tutorials or when when uh, through my courses and you know yeah. so if i can help make them better and make them release music they can right. be proud of right man mission accomplished 
Well, and that's I, a cool thing so with with the the, uh, the mix down coaching community. Mm-hmm. I mean, we listen to a bunch of mixes that people are actually going to release. Right. Right. Yeah. You know? One of those. And I like that. <laughs> and you're yeah. one of them, exactly. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I consider you my you're you're my my uh, Jedi. You you and uh, <laughs> Dom. You're and then you have you know uh, Greg uh, Undo. That that's the you know the the Jedi or not the Jedi. Yeah, Greg, Greg is the Yoda. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, he's the Yoda. Right, right. <laughs> and I, I'm just a Padawan. So, you know, I'm sitting here <laughs> learning the steps still. So love it. That's how I look at you guys. But uh, oh, man, that's so funny. That's so cool. I like that. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So let's get on to the second part here. The second part of five and five. So rapid fire questions. And you could take as much time as you want, or you can just give a short, quick answer. And we'll move on to the next one as we go along here. So here we go. First one, favorite plug in and virtual instrument. Oh, you want to say that again? I think you, you you've been oh, caught off. Cut yeah, out. you were coming out. Okay, yeah. no problem. Favorite plugin or virtual instrument? Oh, that depends for what. <laughs> Favorite plugin or virtual instruments? It's kind of a broad question, I guess, huh? It's very broad. <laughs> it's very broad. Right, let's now let's narrow it down to say uh, favorite reverb. Favorite reverb. Uh, I would say if I was to choose one reverb, the Fab Filter Pro R works pretty well. I, I didn't get the, uh, I didn't try the second version, but the Pro uh, the Pro R. Uh, so I guess whether it's the second version or the first one, it's a pretty complete reverb. I can actually do whatever I want with it. Oh wow, I haven't tried. But that. it's funny because it's not it's not necessarily my go to reverb, right? You know, right? But it's a reverb if I had only to choose one. It would be the one I would choose just because of its flexibility. And you, what you can do with it. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I didn't know they even had a reverb, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought they had their EQ. Cool. <laughs> so. Oh, the EQ is famous. Yeah, it's yeah, a- I know. That's I, I didn't know they even had a reverb, to be honest with you. So I'll have to check that one out. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, is cool. there a personal instrument you you you, you use? Because uh, I know you do, uh, on your, a lot of your songs, you have keyboards and stuff like that. Is there are any... Like in- uh, I I really like if I had to choose I th- you know virtual instruments I think native instruments the complete bundle would be the one I would choose if I only had to to only have to choose one. I, I I'm I'm so green when it comes to virtual instruments. I have my guitar and I stay away from all that stuff. Yeah, I let and, and, go. my partner do all that stuff. <laughs> so. That's perfect. That's even better. Yeah, <laughs> so well, no, the complete. <laughs> Yeah, so, the complete bundle is great. There's like so much variety of sounds and uh, and instruments. So, you know, you've, it, it, they call it complete for a reason, you know. And on second place, I would say the Arturia uh, synth bundle is awesome. Okay, perfect. Well, there you go. All right, question number two. Go to mix, trick, or technique. Oh, uh, the go-to mix, trick, and technique um uh there are several i'm actually <laughs> launching a vi- posting a video next week about that you know <laughs> but um yeah you know working with a template you know to speed up it's all about workflow like for me it's all about speeding up the workflow yeah so i, I want to waste as less time as possible when mixing sure. a song right you know so so that's my that's my thing so you know setting up a template to to start a mix right uh, um yeah it would be my 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 number one trick to to just keep going and especially for the routing part you know right. not, not not necessarily for the plugins and the effects uh, but i still have them inserted but bypassed and that template can evolve over time also of course that's great that's a great uh, but just the routing side of it you know and i can have like a template for different styles of music also you know i can have like a one EDM template where I mix in a certain way and one for rock and country, you know? Yeah. So whatever speeds up the workflow, I'm going to yeah. go for. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. Yeah. And the one thing for, for me is that I got from you was uh, using the, the pre-fades uh, for, for when you're staging. staging and stuff. Yeah. And I love that, man. That's such a great technique. <laughs> it is. Th- thank you for that one. So yeah. you're welcome. Number- and, and you know what? Let, let me add one more. Okay. What like the stupidest, sure tip the easiest that anyone can do and 
this is that that will come like near the end of the mix Mm -hmm. where before starting to take notes i'm going to listen to the first first of all breaks okay breaks is awesome you need to clear up your ears but Mm -hmm. getting back in the studio after break listening to a full mix i'm going to turn my computer monitor off and listen and actually listen to the whole mix without being distracted by the daw the plugins visual aspects right so you shut down turn that off listen right. to the mix you can listen in a different way hmm. and take notes that's a great that's a great that's some great advice I, i'll have to try that there one myself <laughs> thank you you'll you'll see you're going to hear stuff differently right right that's kind of like when i put everything in the truck or in my car and i listen to it you know in a different environment um i i pick up things that oh i didn't hear that in my studio yeah. was... <laughs> <laughs> exactly because i have a home studio and i don't have professionally acoustic. <laughs> so anyways on to question three best piece of advice for inspiration uh for producers uh collaboration yeah i, I agree working with, with people that. yeah i agree with that yeah uh, the... collaboration yeah the best thing I ever did was was to, for Linda and I was to find Sergio, uh, my partner, our partner uh, in in writing. And it, man, it this it's been the best experience. Um, and I'll say this over and over again as this series goes on because it's true. <laughs> it is. So, it is. You know, like for years, for, um, producing albums, um, my, the key for, to my success was to collaborate with people. Even the first album I told you about, the first album I produced, right. Like in 2003 a live album right but the the reason why it was a successful project is because i, sur- I surround myself with good like amazing people to work with yeah yeah and everyone so, uh, we we check our eels out the door there's there's you know there's nothing we're not afraid to try if it doesn't work throw it away and go back exactly uh i even fired myself up as a session drummer on an album i was producing myself right? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah of course <laughs> Of course, you know, there was that's the, like a couple of songs, I think three songs. One was a jazz song and uh, no, two jazz songs. And the other one was kind of a reggae song where, you know, you really need that reggae, you need like reggae drum feel, you know. Right. And uh, I was, I tried it out, you know, just recorded the, the song and it was tied with like on click and stuff, but it didn't feel good, you know. So I was like, okay, this is not going to work. <laughs> so for the, the, those three songs, right? Um, I hired a uh a trio you know a pianist mm-hmm. bass player and a drummer uh, down in florida so we do we, we actually did the uh the right, recording right. remote with a friend of mine yeah and yeah. it was like one of the best decisions i've made for this project yeah I, i've i've actually done that myself when it comes to uh, guitar solos and stuff because uh i it might not be right down my avenue of john year so something I might not be real familiar with, and, and, and I've done that. I've I've actually fired myself from doing guitar solos. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, Man, yeah, you I got one for you. You, you know. So, and yeah, I'll admit it right here. <laughs> so but, you know, so it, it's all about the it, it's all about the song. It's all about the yeah, production. The end, the, end, the end product is what is what matters. We 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 want nothing yeah. but the best. And it's all about it's not about us. No, <laughs> absolutely not. So all there right, you go. number four. Biggest influence on your uh, music production style? Oh, uh, you know, at was what, it what? Was, it, was it Jess? It's not Jesper, is it? <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. Uh, you know, when I started, the Jesper wasn't in the music production world. It was way too, it was probably in diapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a um, young guy, isn't he? <laughs> he's awesome yeah he's he awesome yeah, i love him uh, i would say oh there's several different styles that i like you know um i'm trying to de- kind of enlarge a bit more of my in- influencer reach if i can say that but back when i started mutt lang was like okay oh, man. that's a, like an awesome producer that i look up to you know yeah yeah uh, some great albums he, he he's produced you know yeah yeah and i remember even like uh as a teenager the the producers that actually gave me the uh um kind of the um i forgot uh forgot about the english term but 
um, where I was, where, where, where I kind of decided or were influenced a lot to, to, to pursue as a music producer was, uh, it was like old back then Christian, uh, producers back in Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, John, and Dino, uh, John and Dino Elefante. They were like big shot producers in the Christian music scene back in the nineties. Wow. Uh, they produced like Petra and all those like guardian and, uh, a bunch of artists you know in the uh in yeah. that scene and they were pretty successful they were the, like the big thing back then you know mm -hmm. there were two brothers and uh yeah so i was kind of oh i love what they do you know <laughs> uh and actually john elefante used to be the uh the lead singer for kansas back in the 80s is that right a few albums yeah right. oh my yeah i love yeah, so a very good singer and you yeah. so yeah that was kind we're, of uh we're, we're aging ourselves you know kansas you know <laughs> there you go <laughs> so um and the funny thing was about mutt lang the, the first time i actually read his name on the back of an album car mutt who the hell names your kid mutt <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh, you find out he's, all, he's he's actually australian isn't he i believe so oh um, man I, I can't tell i don't know maybe probably is, but, you know yeah. yeah there's also another one you know bob rock was also oh yeah my, my top producers yeah. back in the night early 2000s yeah you he, know, the, he did a lot with of our lady piece and metallica you know was yeah. great and awesome yeah. and it, and what a great name it's awesome it's a great name as a producer bob yeah. rock that like yeah. you know <laughs> the guy has to be a producer yeah yeah he does Canadian on top of that and he's also canadian so Right, right, and and the fact that that he you know already has his genre set in his name too, so you know. <laughs> there you go. So you can tell he's not a jazz producer. No, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Bob Jazz. So anyway. <laughs> Robert Jazz, you know. <laughs> yeah, or Bob Country or something like that, you know. <laughs> so okay, last one here, Chris. Sure. I I really thank you for doing this interview. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, uh, you're the best, man. You're the best. So here we go. <laughs> One essential item in your studio besides your computer that you cannot live without. Beside my computer that I cannot live without. Yeah. Well, with your, with your you know, if, if you didn't have your computer, you couldn't do anything. So that's the most essential part. I can right? manage to live without lots of stuff. Is if I right? really wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, there... because because the computer would be it. Because you know, without a computer, I cannot work. Right. So right. that would be it. So if you put the computer aside, um, that that's hard to. I enjoy work. I'm a big controller fan. Like you know, I have like a bunch of controllers in front of me. You know, so I love working with com controllers. But I can mix an album on the mouse too, if I really wanted to. So it's like you know, it's not going to stop me on making music. So that's a very tricky question. Because I can always find compressor? my way around. So, <laughs> what, sir? Uh, maybe like a compressor or anything like that. Any any particular, you know, or no, you can always find something in another. In, in I cannot, a, you know, I mixed a full, uh, I mixed a full song using only stuck plugins. Yeah. I made a course on that. Right. <laughs> so for me, it's hard. Uh, of course, I have like go to, I have my favorite gear to work with, to record with. Um, uh, yeah, I guess a good microphone could be yeah, it because with a good microphone, it's hard to make good recordings. That's a great answer. That's a really good. So I, that's I, the only thing I can actually, or a good pair of sets of. Again, you know, I can okay, right. uh, remove your Cali audios. Okay, I'll just put on something else. Right. And start right. Mixing I, with it. You know, same oh, for headphones. Like I love these headphones, the MM five hundred. They're my go to right, headphones. Right. right. But if they break or whatever you know and i need to, to use headphones so i have like other headphones i can work with so yeah but without my without a good microphone yeah i i agree with that there's always there's always that you know what came first chicken or the egg is it the microphone or the preamps yeah I exactly i say microphone. yeah yeah a microphone before a preamp for sure before a good preamp you know? right right because right. i could i could record with the sound interfaces preamps yeah Absolutely. So I, I love that answer. Great answer. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, I, I hope you had some fun today. I hope you had. Some I was fun, fun, man. I really enjoyed it, man. Thanks. Good. Thanks Good. for the invite. Yes, and and you know I, I won't waste any more of your time. I know you got a busy schedule ahead of you, uh, talking to you beforehand. So 
I'll let you get on to your day. And I really do appreciate you doing this with me. And uh, with that said, this is Andy from Inside the Music with Chris Salem. And uh, you all have a great day. Take care.